you doing this morning? Is there joy in this house this morning? Come on, can I hear you? Is there joy in this house? Yes. Father God, we thank you. We praise you for your presence, Lord God. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God still holds a victory.
You ready for the joy of the Lord? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. We don't put our confidence in our earthly, in our earthly strength, but we put our confidence in Him. Amen. If you believe that, let's all clap our hands today. One, two, ready, yeah. Circumstance, this joy that I have is my inheritance joy. This is the joy of the Lord. Sing it out, church, the joy, the joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, He is my home. Yes, He is the joy. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Everybody clap those hands. This is our weapon in the battle. It's our praise. It's not just a song. It's the truth of God. There is a Savior. There is a Savior in the valley place. That's right. He's walking. He's walking beside me and he knows my pain. God, beginning at the end. God, right there in the midst of big joy. This is, this is the joy of the Lord. Oh, the joy, joy. This is, this is the joy of the Lord. Oh, the joy, the joy, the joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord. In 
There I will see him face to face. He'll wipe every tear from my face. Joy, this is the joy of the Lord. There is a king. There is a king seated on his throne. Prepare a place. Prepare a place where I call my home. There I will see him. To wipe every tear away. To wipe every tear from my face. Joy. This is the joy. This is the joy of the Lord. Oh, the joy, joy. Trust in you, Jesus. We put our trust in you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh God, hallelujah. We worship you in the battle, God. We worship you in the battle, Jesus. We worship you in the battle, God. We worship you in the battle, God. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. Oh Jesus, we worship you. Oh Jesus, we worship you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, if you believe that, give God a shout of praise today. Hallelujah. Everything we need, God, is found in you. You are Jehovah Jireh, you are the God who provides. Jehovah Nisi, God, you reign in victory, Father. I will never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I could do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. And I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through, going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me now. You would cross, for you would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown. You Closer than you are right now. Jira, yes, you are Jira, for you are enough. Oh, Jira, you are enough. So I will be, so I will be content in every circumstance. Jira, Jira, you are enough. Forever, forever enough. You're always enough. You're more than enough. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Forever enough. You're always enough. You're more than enough. Going through a storm. Going through a storm. But I won't go down. I hear your voice carrying the rhythm of the wind to call me. For you would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown. 
You've never been closer. You've never been closer than you are right now. For you are, you are Jireh. You are enough. You are enough. Come on, King of Life. Let's declare who he is today, Jireh. For I will be content. I will be content. In every circumstance. Jira, you are for Jira. You are enough. Forever, forever enough. You are more than enough. Yes, he is. God, your presence is enough for me. Yes, you are. next part goes like this. I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. Sing it out. I'm already chosen. I know who I am. I know what you've spoken. I know what you've spoken. I'm already loved. More than I could even fathom. Yeah. That is enough. That is enough. I'm already loved. I'm already loved. Chosen. Chosen. And I know who I, I know am. Who I, am. I, know I know what you spoke. Oh, I'm already loved. Already loved. More than I could even imagine. More than I could imagine. And that is enough. Say that, that is enough. enough. And that is enough. That is enough. To work for this grace, I hallelujah. I, I know what you've spoken. I know what you've spoken. I'm, already I'm already loved more than I can even imagine. imagine. Oh, that is enough singing. That is enough. Oh, I'm already loved. I'm already loved. You gotta get that in your spirit today. You don't have to work for anything. I know who I am. I know what you've spoken, yes. You open doors that I can never open on my own, God. More than I could imagine, yeah. That is enough, sing it out. That is enough. And that is enough. Oh, Jaira, Jaira, yeah, yeah, Jaira. So I will, I will be content in every circumstance. Every circumstance. So I will, I will be content in every circumstance. Every circumstance. So I will, I will be content. That's right in every, in every circumstance. You are, you are, child. you are not. Your word says this, if he dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor, how much more will he clothe you? How much more will he clothe you? And if he watches over every sparrow, how much more does he love you? How much more does he love if he if he dresses with beauty and splendor, yeah. How much more? How much more? How much more? How much more? If he watches over, if he watches over every sparrow, how much more does he love? How much more? How much more? And if 
He dresses the lilies, yeah. He dresses oh, with beauty and splendor. How much more will He clothe you? How much more will He clothe you? If He watches over every sparrow, oh, how much more does He Or imagine according to his power working in us. He's more than enough, more than, more than you ask, think or imagine according to his power working in us. How much more? For Jairus, say, Jairus, you are not. Jaira, you are mine. I will be, I will be content in every circumstance. You are Jaira, you are mine. I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, you're my provider. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Nisi. See, Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign in Jehovah Jehovah Shalom. My Prince of Peace. That's who he is today. My provider. Jehovah Nisi, God, you reign in victory. Oh, you reign in victory. Lord, you reign in victory. Yes, Jehovah Shalom. My Prince of Peace, yes, you are. My Prince of Peace. I worship you, Lord. And I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you. 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 Lord, I worship you.
of victory, our healer, our restorer, our way maker, our father and our friend. We just sang that we were already chosen, but you only understand that when everything else is pushed away and you lock eyes with the one who made you, who chose you, who called your name out of the heavens and gave you breath and life and purpose and identity. Take one more moment, just close your eyes. Let's not rush through the fact that Jehovah Jireh, our provider, our provider of not just material, but of peace and of rest and of a sound mind, even of a strong soul and a sturdy foundation. The provider of our strength when we are weak the provider of the blueprint when we don't know what's next. The one who controls all time and space. Come on, with me, join right now. I want you to close your eyes, get your eyes off of everything else. You came into this room and the Lord knew you would be here and he desires to meet you right where you are. Father, we don't blow past this moment. Father, we don't want to just run through a moment where we get a chance to praise you, not for what you've done, but who you are. And it's in that place and from that place we can trust that everything else is taken care of. Everything is in your hands, Father God. Everything that you have waiting on you, church, everything that is waiting down on you, put it in his hands this morning. Say, Father, I give it back to you. Your plans are better. Your ways are higher. Your thoughts are greater. Father, again, we step into a place of trusting you with everything, everything, everything. Because your word says that you have plans to prosper us and not harm us, to give us a hope and a future. And that is for every one of your sons and your daughters. So we receive that today, Lord God, we receive your word as truth and that you have chosen us before we chose you. And because of that, Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor that you see us right where we are and you don't discard us. Father God, that you just bring us closer. You chasing after us. You chasing after us, even where we stand and with all that we do and all that we have and all that is not so great. You chasing after us because your heart for us is that great because you see us from our end to our beginning. And you have declared already that what you have in store for us, what you plan for us shall come to pass. Shall we keep our eyes on you, fixed on you, trusting in you and believing in you that your loving kindness would draw us each and every day. Father, we thank you, we bless you and may everything that happens from this moment forward. Bless your mighty name. In Jesus' name, we say together, amen, as we agree, amen. Give the Lord the hand praise that he is due. Come on, along this room. You're good, Father, you're good, you're good, you're always good, you're always good. Thank you, worship team, so awesome. Give it up for the worship team, my Lord. My goodness. Well, good morning, family. I have the honor this morning to um, share with you guys an opportunity to recognize our high school graduates. It is graduation season. So at this time, I would like to ask all of the high school graduates that are in the room to come and join me up here up front. We can give them a hand as they come up. There are some that could not be here this morning. They have from dance recitals, so all sorts of things going on. Their final high school things going on. <laughs> These groups of students are amazing. They are amazing. Give them another round of applause. 
Here they come. We've got some more awesome. Look at these beautiful faces. This handsome man here. Another handsome man. All right. <laughs> well, I wanted to just um, take an opportunity to let you know here at Kingdom Life, every year graduation season, we find it very important to recognize our high school graduates. Uh, all of us in here have uh, experienced high school, and whether it was recently or years ago, but you know, a lot of things in regards to high school have, hasn't changed. The, the, the challenges that you go through in the, in the development stages and the school work and the, you, I don't have to go do the list. I think you remember, right? Anybody remember? Or did anyone try to forget? <laughs> Either way, high school is not just the easiest thing to navigate. And when I think about this group here in particular, I think about what they faced in order to graduate. Um, this group in particular right here, their service in our church has been exceptional. Majority of these students have served in this church since they were in seventh grade. They, yes, they deserve a round of applause for that. They have served it on camera. They have served on the sound ministry. They have served as ushers and greeters and kingdom kids and VBSs. And they served tirelessly and not just since they were in seventh grade, but in particularly through the COVID season. They were so instrumental at you being able to have service online during the COVID season. We would come in here as a worship team to an empty room, yet we would see these faces masked up, geared up, and ready to get those cameras rolling and the sound working so that you could enjoy service online. And then when we opened the doors and began to open up the children's ministry, boom, there, there they were. And I just wanted you to see these faces and know that the message of serving and connecting to the house was evident in their life. They walked it out, even with all the other challenges that they had in school on their own, trying to do school online, trying to figure out how to connect with friends, the challenges that came with that, they committed to serving this house. So for that, I believe they deserve an extra round of applause. And at this time, I would like just to present all these lovely, lovely faces with a little gift from us to you. This is a little gift from the Elevate Youth Ministry and from Kingdom Life. And as they receive that gift, I would like to ask Pastor Marco to come up and just say a few words. Graduates, hello. Am I on? One, two. You can turn around. Come on. Come on in. Come together. We're going to pray for you in a minute. The church is going to pray for you. But I am extremely proud of you. Even though I graduated in the early 90s. Yes, in that other century. A millennial. Right? In the 19s I graduated. I remember as if it was yesterday. And I just remember that feeling of being ready to take over the world. The, it was my oyster, the, the things that were ahead of me. And then also I remember the challenges I faced and the opposition that came, whether it was university, home, friendships, navigating life. But I also know that you have something that I didn't have when I was 18, and that is a faith that will guide you through if you will allow it to. You have the Spirit of God in you that if you will allow to bring things to remembrance from first grade, you know, from Sunday school, from VBS, from what your mama taught you, from Sunday mornings, from your personal devotions, from your prayer life, the Holy Spirit, Jesus promises us, will never leave us, will never forsake us. He said he'll be our advocate, our counselor. He said he will bring all things to remembrance so that you're never alone, even though there might be days ahead where you feel like that. Or it might be that way because you might feel like the only Christian in the university or college you're going to or in the workforce you're about to join into. But that doesn't mean... You're alone. That means God is ready to do something great in you if you would trust him. And we believe in you. 
right here, you have a home, you have a family, you have a church that believes in you, and not because you're perfect, not because you're not going to mess up, not because you might make some mistakes, despite all those things. We love you because of who you are, because who God created you to be, and the incredible gift that's in every single one of you that we would love to continue to be a part of, even if some of you are down south at school or whatever it may be, or if you're going to a local school, we're here, we're family, and we love you, and we're proud of you, and we celebrate you today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pastors and ministers, let's pray. If you don't mind coming on up, they're going to come behind you and pray. Actually, what we're going to do is have you step back three steps and then turn around. Let that, and church, actually, I know I have some high school, come right behind them. I know I have some, high, some college graduates here this morning or online. If you are a college graduate, and I know we have some parents that are in here that have been going to night school and online classes and you've graduated. I would love for you to stand up also. We want to recognize you. My girl, there you are. Congratulations. Look at that. Mrs. Petway, you got it, girl. You got it. <laughs> so church, if you do me a favor, if there's a college graduate next to you, lay your hands on them and pray. The rest of you stand on up and extend your hands to these graduates. I want them to see your beautiful faces and your hands. I want you, if you're receiving this prayer, I know a lot of times we bow our heads and close our eyes, but I want you to see hundreds of people praying over you, believing you, and being willing to stand with you in this beautiful adventure called life, no matter what it may bring, because God's got you. So Lord God, we thank you. We thank you that you know the plans. You know the plans you have for every single one of them. As parents and as leaders and as pastors and as elders, we might not know every single plan. We might know in part, but Lord God, you know every single plan. You know every single hair on their head. You knit them together when they were in their mama's womb. You set them apart. You gave them a plan and a purpose. Not that it is a target that is incredible to hit, but that, Lord God, that they are your child. You claim them. You love them. You praise them. You are pleased, and you celebrate them. And, Lord God, we come alongside of you today saying that they don't just belong to you. They belong to us. That you don't just love them, but we love them. And Lord God, we celebrate and praise them today, not because of just what they accomplished in their education, but who they are in you and who they will continue to be in you. So we speak your hand of protection over them. We speak a blessing over them. We speak for divine relationships at universities, in the workforces, in communities, in their dorms. Right now in the name of Jesus, we pray that you give them discernment and wisdom, whether it's through the curriculum of the schools or whether it's through the influences of friends around them. We pray your protection over them and you to continue to lead and guide them all the days of your life and we pray that with boldness because it is your very word that we speak here today over them in Jesus precious name everybody say amen, amen. give it up for our high school graduates Woo. amen graduates one thing before I have you go sit down and that is this Today, I do have a word about being image bearers, okay, that I believe is for all of us, but I hope you'll open your hearts and your spirits and your minds to receive the word of God this morning because it's what he wants you to know and to walk in all the days of your life. Amen? Amen. We love you guys. Give it up one last time. <laughs> Minister Sandy. I just love it. I love them. I don't want them to go. <laughs> well,
Well, as uh, Pastor Marco said, my name is Minister Sandy. I realized I forgot to say that in the very beginning. <laughs> and I am the director of the youth ministry here, Elevate Youth. Um, super proud of our Elevate Youth. Um, I wanted to just say, you know, again, another welcome. And welcome to all of you online. We're so glad that you joined us. And if you're online and you want to share this awesome moment with those that you love, feel free to share that. Um, First-time visitors in the room, any first-time visitors, if you would just raise your hand, we would just love to acknowledge you. Welcome, 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 welcome. If you are a first-time guest, either online or in the house, you can feel free to text guest to the number on the screen, or you can go to our app and click I am new, and there will be more information about who we are and any questions you may have, you can surely find there. Oh. Children, where are the children in the house? <laughs> Raise your hand. I see one in the front. Raise your hand if you're a child in the house. I see you. Make some noise. This is where you could be loud. Use your outside voice. All right. All right. There you go. You are dismissed. You can get on up and head down to your classes, but use your inside voice there. Okay? <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Marco. <laughs> I wanted to give you guys also some great news. Summer camp is officially sold out. <laughs> sold out first time in history. Sold out early. And it's very much because of all of you. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and from the hearts of all the Elevate Youth Ministry leaders um, and parents for the way you guys showed up for the fundraiser. It was amazing. I hope you enjoyed it. And we were able to raise over $4,000 to sponsor students. So thank you very much, church, for supporting the ministry the way that you did. We also have another opportunity to support and get involved in our community here at Kingdom Life. So we are once again helping to give school supplies to students for the 2022 and 2023 school year. So I don't know if you received a flyer coming in, but if you haven't, um, you can find more information by texting the word outreach to the number on that screen. If you text outreach, you'll get more information on how you can get involved with this project, okay? And then we have the women's ministry. Any ladies in the house? Yes, we have a women's ministry event, if you have not heard. It is coming up Friday, July 8th, so it's right around the corner. It'll be at 7.30 p.m. here at the Fellowship Court. We will be um, hosted by our very own Malexi Torres. And she's going to join us. We're going to have a great time together. She's going to show us how to do flower arrangements. So I'm, I'm telling you, it's not just, oh, put like two roses together. We No, it's going to be gorgeous. I've worked with Malexi. Malexi is going to shock you. She's going to pull out gifts in you you didn't know you had. So I encourage you to be there. But you need to register. So go and get your tickets. You can go to the website or the app for that. All right? And lastly, for our women, we have the City Fest Women's Event that's coming up in August. So keep your eyes open for that. More details will come. But Minister Lauren will be outside in the lobby at a table today to answer any questions that you may have regarding the City Fest Women's Event. Sound good? All right, all right. Now we are going to shift over into our offering and tithe. Anybody, like, happy for that? I think we should be, right? Jehovah Jireh, our provider, we get to celebrate the way he's provided, right? And there's many ways you can give here at Kingdom Life. You can either text GIVE to that same number on the screen. If you haven't put that number that we keep saying number on the screen, if you haven't put that in your phone, I want to encourage you to do that. That is a number that we use to stay in touch and find out information about everything here, okay? So you can either text GIVE to that number. Um, you can go to our website or our app. Or you can put an envelope in the bucket in the lobby. And if you really, really want to be diligent and intentional, you can put it in the mail as well and mail it to our headquarters office. Um, I'm ready to call up one of my Elevate students who is just, we met during the pandemic. We met online. For, so for the whole time we were online, I just kept seeing this name pop up, Danny Ricketts, Danny Ricketts. And I'm like, hey, you're always here with us. And then when we opened our doors June 2nd last year, I finally got to meet her in person, and we've hit it off ever since. So I'm handing this over to Danny Ricketts to give you the offering and tithe message for this morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Danielle, and I just wanted to briefly talk this morning just about consistency um, based on the verse 
from Galatians 6, verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So sometimes we have to sow while we're in the valley, while we're struggling. And, you know, we're told to tithe while we're struggling financially. And even with other aspects of our walk with God, too. Like, for example, we have to make the time to have our personal devotion with God, even when we're in an extremely busy season. Or we have to praise God even when we can't see him in our current circumstances. We have to pray and pray and pray even when we can't see any fruit of our prayers. And I've been right there with you, especially this past year. Um, my family and I have been in a very rough season where adversities followed one after the other after the other. And it all felt a little too difficult for me to bear. But I declared the goodness and the favor of God over my life during the difficult times. And now on the other side of it, I can say we've been experiencing blessing after blessing after blessing. Yeah, God has been so good. So I would just like to encourage you to keep going, to keep tithing, keep praying, keep worshiping, keep believing, because our God is true to his word, and blessings and favor will be yours if you remain consistent in him. So I'm just going to pray over you all right now, and I'm going to pray Colossians 1, verses 9 to 12 in the message version, so you could just receive this in your heart. Be assured that from the first day we heard of you, we haven't stopped praying for you, asking God to give you wise minds and spirits attuned to his will, and so acquire a thorough understanding of the ways in which God works. We pray that you live well for the master, making him proud of you as you work hard in his orchard. As you learn more and more how God works, you'll learn how to do your work. We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul. Not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength God gives. It is strength that endures the unendurable and spills over into joy thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. Okay, enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you. Zwei. Oh my God, what a good service we've had already, amen? All right, let's all stand on our feet. Let's just worship a little bit more. Here we go. Everybody rock. Hey, 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 hey. Here we go. All things, everyone. All things are possible when we believe. When we believe, all chains are breakable. When we receive, when we receive it, Yahweh, you keep your promises. You keep your promises. Here we go, because you said it. Because you said it. Hey, we believe it. Hey, because you said it. Because if you said it, we believe it. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Because if you said it, we believe it. Your own man, cause you're a man of your if you word. said it, if you said it, we believe it. Oh, say oh, 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 oh. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man, cause you're a man of your word. Let's sing that again. All things, all things are possible when we believe it. When we believe, all chains are breakable. When we receive, when we receive Yahweh, you, you keep your promises. Oh, cause you said, it. hey, believe here we go. Cause you said it, cause if you said it, we believe it. Oh, 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 cause if you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man, cause you're a man 
of your word Cause if you said it, we believe it That's right Whoa, oh, 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 oh Cause if you said it, we believe it You're a man of your word We have this confidence, sing it out Cause we have this confidence You'll finish what you started You'll finish what you started In God you have never failed And you won't start Patient in every step You're patient in every heart That's right, you never fail God you have never failed And you won't start We have this confidence you started. You finished what you started. If God, you have never failed, and you won't stop. You're present in every step. You're patient in every heart. I will never fail. Sing it out, and you won't stop with me. Come on, church, make some noise in this place. Cause if you said it, cause if you said it, we believe it. Oh, 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 cause if you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man, cause you're a man of your word. If you said it, we believe it. That's right. Oh, 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 if you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man, cause you're a man of your word. You said it. Cause you said it, we believe it. You said it, that's right. Cause you said, if you said it, we believe it. 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 If you said it, cause I am who you say I am. Good morning, good evening, whatever time. Thank you for tuning in. If you're here this morning, welcome to graduation Sunday. What an, like Minister Jason said, what an incredible spirit, incredible service. I am so glad to be with you this morning. My name is Marco. I am the lead pastor here, and it is an honor to lead this ministry and to bring the word here this morning. 
And uh, it's just amazing how God works and God does things. Hearing Danny Ricketts, I just love that name, just Danny Ricketts, hearing her talk, and I'm like, man, got to have her preach, man. Oof. Come on. But what's amazing is Danny Ricketts' grandmother, who went to be with the Lord this year, was, has been here for years and years, and she prayed and believed that her family was going to be in this church. And now, right, her and her family come to this church, and then she's like, okay, now it's time to go be with the Lord. And what's amazing about that is just God's hands and how he orchestrates and works things. Danny's downstairs in the two-year-old class ministering and teaching my son. You know, and it's just amazing. And I'm so glad that she's only going to Yale University, so... <laughs> So she's not going far. But even that, how, you know, talk about how God is faithful and God opens doors. And when you're faithful with the little and faithful with finances and your prayer and, and the things God gives you, how he opens up doors. So God's opening some incredible doors for her and our other graduates. But that's the reality for all of us, for all of us. And we are in the middle of some crazy times. The truth is, times are, seems to always be crazy no matter what generation you're from. But there are some unique things going out around the country right now. And as much as it may be, you know, a, an exciting time for others or a despairing time for some, it is a time of great polarization within our country. They say that our nation is becoming more and more and more polarized. Even with the reversal of Roe versus Wade, what they're saying right now, and when I say they, meaning socialists, or they call them, you know, futurists, which basically study society and project where the nation will be 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the road. And they're, they're predicting, some are predicting that, it's going to be more separated and polarizing than at the height of, you know, the Jim Crow South. That there's going to be, I mean, some people are even saying like, they wouldn't be surprised if there was a civil war again. And you're like, huh? How's that even possible? You know, and like, okay, that might be a little bit reaching, but this is kind of the talk because... People are drawing lines in the sand. People are just one side or the other. People are just fighting and bickering and tearing each other down. And through this, I mean, they're even saying that states might be breaking away from the union at the worst case scenario or, you know, a good case scenario of not war, but, you know, Texas is going to be gone and California would follow and all of these things. And you're left in... My question is, who are we? Who are we? What's our voice? What's our example? What's our influence? What's our role? Because at the heart of this, of this society, and that's just one thing of all different things. I mean, right now, there is, this country is becoming more and more secular, at the same time, becoming more and more spiritual. And the reason that is, is because just like the middle class economically, the middle class of kind of just the Sunday Christians or the Sunday faith or just the faith of our parents is evaporating. And people that are now drawn to spirituality, drawn to the things of God, they are believing more than ever. And that is so encouraging. But on the other side is a secularism that is now becoming the pervading thought and mindset and morality of the 
country we live in. That's why teenagers going off to college in high school, our college students, our young people, you are being faced with some strong and powerful opinions and viewpoints and thoughts. What do you allow to shape what you think? To shape what you speak? To shape the way you act and live? And this is the question for all of us. And this is what I wanna dig into just a little bit this morning and hopefully turn our eyes to a God, to a God that is just, to a God that is love, to a God that is truth, to a God that is merciful and graceful, to a God that claims us, that loves us, and that praises us, just like he did his son Jesus that we talked about last week. So let's get into scripture here. Are you ready to go with me? So we're going to talk about image bearers. And make no mistake about it, I don't care. If we have breath, we are image bearers. What do I mean by that? It is only by the breath of God that we have life. Genesis 127 says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God is the creator. And this is one of the most profound, if not the most profound statement in the Bible. That out of all creation... God took and created the heavens and the earth, all the animals of the sea and of the air and of the land, that God created everything. He saved his best creation for last. And what he did is he took man. The Bible says from the dirt of the land... And he breathed his life. He just breathed his pneuma, his breath in and became life. This is so profound because it's what sets us apart from all other animals. It sets us apart that no matter, no matter what science has discovered and came up, and no matter what theory, the theory of evolution still has one missing link that's unaccounted for. And that is, how did life start? Where did it come from? No matter how it may or may not have evolved, we can argue that until... Jesus comes back. But right at the beginning of it all, when you took that dirt or whatever it may have been, this breath, this spirit of God that now fills all men, all women, now means there is something so sacred about your life. There is something that sets your life apart from the animals of the land and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. We are image bearers. We are created in the very image of God. Is there any arguing this point? There is. But at the crux of that argument is an argument of faith and belief if God is real. But if you come to the belief, to the conclusion, to the place of faith where you say, Jesus 
is my Lord and Savior. I believe that there is a God, a creator of all, and I believe in Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit, which means we are a follower of Christ, a Christian. At the heart of that is that there is Elohim, the creator of all, and that he created us, and we can't just pass this by because if he created me, he created you. If he created you, he created all. And then the argument is, well, when did he create? When is there life? When is it actually God's spirit living in us. Some would argue that that doesn't happen until I take a natural breath. I may argue with that, not because of opinion. I have not come here. Young people, listen to me. I have not come here this morning to express my opinion. I'm going to hit you with some scriptures this morning that I hope you write down, that I hope you go home and listen to the recording if you don't record it, if you don't write it down quick enough and listen to it and dig into it for yourself. Because the Bible is implicit of when we receive life, when God called us his own. If you can stand and say, for God has a plan for my life, plans to prosper me and not to harm me, well, then when did God's plan for your life start? When did it come? David talks about this in Psalm 139, and he says, you knit me together in my mother's womb. In Jeremiah 1.5, When God calls out Jeremiah, he says, I set you apart in your mother's womb and called him a prophet and knew the days of his life, his calling, his purpose, his gifts was in here. That's why the sanctity of life is powerful because it's the very image of of God that we believe. It's why once we take our own breath and there may be something in the natural that's challenging whatever situation we may have, we don't as a human race say that person is no longer worth anything. Thus, let's disregard because of side effects, because of some natural defects. No. Why? Because there's sanctity of life. We have seen in the past, wars had the the great world war II, talking about the superior human race, is founded in this mindset that there is a perfect human and others that fall short of that are no longer worthy of even life. And they try to exterminate an entire population of people. If you had any challenges, physical challenges, mental challenges, you're no longer good enough to live or to breathe, we'll get rid of them too. That's the slippery slope of when we dare to think that God has not created all flesh. Sons and daughters, he poured out his spirit on all of us. And he didn't pour out his spirit. He didn't breathe his spirit. He didn't create us with his spirit. When I gave my life to the Lord when I was seven years old or when I was 22 years old, he didn't do that when I came out of my mother's womb. He did that at conception. But now... You may be hearing my words and say, it's tough to accept. Because here's the deal. My words are not to separate. 
It's not to polarize. It's not to now for us to go on to Facebook or Instagram after this and argue the points of what I'm saying or what somebody else says as a rebuttal of the things and now join the polarization and join the fray and then absolutely go against the heart of God. Jesus, when he came, he said, I want you to be the salt and the light of the earth. I want you to be a city on a hill. What is a city on a hill? Ramon last week, he gave up the offering. He didn't even tell the whole story. Just like our girl this morning, there's so much more they could share. But he talked about raising money to build a roof over this church in the Philippines in the mountains. Little did we... We didn't hear at all, but to his amazement, what God did was bring in more and more and more. They didn't just build a roof. They built a church, okay? They didn't just build a church, but when the pastor was homeless because he was evicted with his family, they were able to build a house on that property because even more money came in. That church, he says, where there's no power, no electricity in this village, on this hill, that when you look, you see the church standing out as a city on the hill and now people are drawn to it and people are rushing and flooding this church in the Philippines. This is what Jesus was talking about, that we would be hope to a world. It's amazing the things Jesus could have argued in one, but he decided it's not worth arguing because I have a bigger plan, which is redemption. I have a bigger plan, which is hope for all people. How dare we not stand in that same place? Can I just throw one thing out and I'm gonna get to the scripture? The right thing, the wrong way, is the wrong thing. Here, I'll say it again. Trying to do the right thing and believing in the right thing and declaring the right thing but doing it the wrong way becomes the wrong thing. You're like, I don't know, I don't know. What are you trying to say? Fathers, don't exasperate your children. What is that scripture saying? That fathers have wrong intentions, that they're trying to do the wrong thing, not even a little bit. They're saying, dads, parents, mama, pastor, leader, friends. If you're trying to do the right thing, but you do it the wrong way, you could exasperate your child, you could exasperate your friend, you could exasperate your colleague, you could exasperate the very people that God is calling us to share his good news with. Thus, God declares in Isaiah, your thoughts, your thoughts are not my thoughts. He says, I know you're trying to do church here. I know you're trying to do stuff. I know you're trying to make an impact. I know you're trying to do the right thing. I know you're trying to fight for my name. But let me just let you know right now, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. He says, for my thoughts are greater and higher than your thoughts. For my ways are greater and higher than your ways. So hear me out. Our mission statement at Kingdom Life, the foundation of who we believe we are, is to proclaim and demonstrate the gospel of the kingdom and the rule of Christ as God's solutions to the kingdoms of this world. See, it's not my opinion. It's not my ways. It's God's ways. It's God's thoughts. It's God's solutions. 
So let me ask you a few questions here. What are we proclaiming? And what are we demonstrating? We're going to fall on two sides. We are either proclaiming and demonstrating what we believe is the truth of God. But are you doing it in a way that's bringing solutions to the world? Or the others? What do we allow to capture our thoughts, to capture our minds, to capture the way we think? What is it based on? See, what shapes and influences and molds our thoughts and ways, what are those things? What are the things that are shaping and influencing and molding our thoughts and our ways? See, when we proclaim our thoughts, it's proclaiming is our thinking, what we believe. When we demonstrate, it's our ways, it's what we're doing. So what becomes the guiding influence for those things in our lives? What is shaping those things? What, are, what is our motivation? What molds those things? And that's where Isaiah says, what the Lord put on him, a prophetic word that says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. He's not talking. Let me get this. Let's get. God's not talking to unbelievers here. Do you hear me? God's not talking to people that don't believe in Jesus, that people that don't believe to him. He's talking to the church. He's talking to his people. Our thoughts and our ways. See, I believe we can love the Lord, but we get it twisted. We get it twisted. We start believing in the things of man and the teachings of man and the ways of man over the ways of God. So here's my challenge for all of us. Can we get back to the basics of our faith? To the word of God. Can we get back to the word? Can we get back to the word of God? I just want to ask you a quick, oh, is that what you believe when it comes to what's going on in society? Okay. What does God believe? Because here it is. I don't want to give you my, people want to, oh, Pastor Marco, what do you think about what's going on? What do you think about the Supreme Court? What do you think about the legislation that the president just signed that's going to go to the, what do you think about all this stuff? I have no thoughts. None. I have no opinion that is of my own. God, I want your thoughts. God, I want to believe and know and see what you say and how you say it. Why would I exasperate my second child? Because I'm trying to do with my second child what was successful with my first. So then I got to now be led. That's why the spirit of God is so powerful. That's why we need it. That's why Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us. To give us discernment and understanding and insight. Can you believe that Jesus was engaged with the highest rulers of the time? King Herod. A man, at least from ancestry, that comes from God's people. Engaging with Jesus and Jesus doesn't say a word. Why was Jesus? Did Jesus not have the truth? Could Jesus not have taken the bat of truth and smacked it up against Herod's head, his mindset? He knew. Nothing I can say will make a difference here. But see, we have, and sometimes we even know that, nothing I'm going to say is going to make a difference here, but I'm going to say it anyways. I'm going to do it anyways. We have to now learn to mature in the things of God to know his solutions. And here's the deal. If I don't know his solutions, guess what? I have no solution today 
God, I'll continue to pray, or I'm going to listen to hopefully others. Getting a little worked up here. All right. So if we build our lives and our society on our own thoughts and our own ways, it's the very building blocks of a secular society. If we build society, if we build our homes, if we build our lifestyles based on our own thoughts and our own ways, it is the foundation, the building blocks of a secular society. And that's what we see. You're saying, look at Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel. I gave them like 50 scriptures this morning. And can you believe it, Minister Manny? I didn't give you the scripture. So here's another one. All right. So Genesis 11 verse 4 says, Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we... So that we may make a name for ourselves. Let's build ourselves a society that will lift us up and make names for ourselves. Young people, don't go to college with the mindset of making a name for yourself. Can you make Jesus' name great? Because if you can do that, God will use you. God will prosper you. God will propel you into who you are, into your calling, into the things that he has declared over you when you were in your mother's womb that others don't even believe is possible, but is the truth. So that we may make a name for ourselves, otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Are we building a modern-day Tower of Babel without even knowing it? And why I say that is because are some of our thoughts the building blocks for the Tower of Babel in today's modern society? But we're passionate about them because our feelings and emotions say something to it. And that's what we may follow. Or it's a compelling majority case of what the world believes and thinks. Are we just going to join along? Because we will be the minority. But here's the truth. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we now said we now belong to another kingdom. We now have an identity that's greater than my skin color, greater than my history, greater than my nationality. It, that all those things are second. They're second. Second is good. It's not lost, but what's first is I'm a child of God. I am an image bearer. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. So now God is saying, make my thoughts your thoughts. Make my ways your ways. Make my ways your ways. Or are we just going to believe because it's how I feel? Or are we going to believe, here's some of the twisted stuff. Are we just going to believe in something because that's the way I was taught when I was younger? Or just because? Or do we really want to believe? Can we really wrestle with some stuff? See, God, I don't think God minds when we wrestle and we have a humble heart. And we're trying to figure out his ways. And we stumble along sometimes. And there's grace that goes with that. There's understanding with one another. I'm telling you, people that do not go to church, people that do not believe in Jesus Christ, they're drawn to humility. They're drawn to compassion. They are drawn to love. And what do you know? Those are like the main things Jesus says he wants us to represent. See, the kingdom of God 
If we're to belong to the kingdom of God, I shared this quote from A.R. Bernard a few weeks ago. The kingdom of God is a comprehensive way of seeing life. Plain and simple. It's a comprehensive way, meaning it's a fully encompassing way that we engage in life as we know it. The way we think, the way we act, the way we are. It encompasses everything. Our words, it informs our words, our thoughts, our motives, our actions, and our attitudes. Will we allow Jesus to be a comprehensive influence that changes the way we speak, the way we think, the motives of our heart, the actions and the attitudes that we have. Here, let me give you some more scripture here because I'm going to hit you with some scriptures now because God, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 14, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. In the beginning, before time, Jesus, at creation, Jesus The word is Jesus. How will you begin to understand the thoughts of Jesus, the ways of Jesus, his word? That's right. Plain and simple, his word. Not cherry picking his word, but a full comprehensive way of looking at all the facets and attitude, you know, of the word. And it's a process. One step, I remember the first time I tried to read the Bible, I was like, oh, Lord, this is, bring me back to the Bridgeport, back then, the Bridgeport Post Sports section. I understand that. This, but guess what? Anything worth, anything in life means we engage in a process, a walk, a beginning, a step, Our high school graduates right today can do calculus. Some of us learn calculus. Do you know calculus today? No chance. But man, and I would say to you high school graduates, how did you learn calculus? Easy. 17 years ago, 16 years ago, your mama said one plus one said, one, two, three, four, let's learn to count, five, six, seven, eight. Who knew that that very building block of just learning to count and know your numbers brought you all the way to knowing trigonometry, calculus, geometry, advanced mathematics, and all these things. God is the same way. There's no shame if we God, you're at that first building block. But I'm telling you, the sky's the limit. He will pour out his spirit on all flesh. We know Jesus and receive grace and truth by reading his word. Here's the other thing. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, this is Jesus talking at the Last Supper. If you love me, keep my commands, his word. Not the Old Testament law, his word. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you to be with you forever. Forever. Who is this advocate that will be with us? The Holy Spirit. When will he be with us? When we get into God's word. You teach it. <laughs> and then in verse 17, this advocate that will help us And be with us forever is the spirit of what? The spirit of truth. Whose truth? See, whose truth is to govern my mind? Is it my truth? Is it your truth? 
Do we have different truths? That's called reality. And we all live different realities, all experience different forms of reality with the circumstances of life. That doesn't mean it shifted and changed truth to now become something that is circumstantial based on our experiences and your truth is now different than my truth. No, there is an author of truth, Jesus Christ. He came and he brought the word and he was grace and truth perfectly came together. This is something that confounds us as Christians and as humans of how we can be perfectly gracious and perfectly truth melding together as one that's why we need the holy spirit the spirit of truth through god's word see if this was really true to us what else would we have to do today than to read his word what else measures The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. College students, soon to be college students, man, you're going to be in an environment most likely for four years that is building a tower amongst themselves, a city amongst themselves. How can you withstand such pressure, such isolation? How can you withstand such argumenting with men and women that are professors at times that have so much more life experience, so much more education, so much more insight that they can tear down your arguments? How can you withstand? Oh, I'll tell you. Jesus says, if you love me and keep my commands, I will ask the Father and he will give you another an advocate to help you and to be with you forever. So we are never alone. And that goes for our students, that goes for our single moms, that goes for our working dads, that goes for our 20 year old, our 19 year old, those that are battling some type of sin. It doesn't matter who we are. God's faithfulness is true to us no matter what. First Corinthians 2 says this. I'm gonna give you some scriptures. Write this down. First Corinthians 2, verse 6 and 7. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Insert that into our social mindset. Let that frame our thoughts in the way we now see what we're engaging in. No, we declare God's Wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. See, this is in the beginning of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 where it says God's wisdom revealed by his spirit. And you want to know how this chapter ends? It ends with saying, but we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. I had to get off social media this weekend. Not because of the world. Not because of people. Because of Christians. The venom that they speak from one side and just the tower of babbleness they speak in the middle realizing they got brick and mortar building a city here. But here's the thing. God wants us to become one. He actually did it It was called Pentecost. They had one voice. They came together. They became one people from all nations that we are now part of. But it isn't for ourselves. It's for his name. It's for his glory. It's for his power. Because of his truth. Because of his grace. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. We are new creations if we will allow God to make us. 
And new creation isn't, I said a prayer and I'm a new creation. Part of that is true, but the same way he redeemed mankind at the cross, but he's also going to redeem mankind at the end means there is a work also still in progress. There is a work still in progress in us. We have to embrace the process. Will we be image bearers? Will we recognize that our thoughts, our emotions and feelings that are not of God's, some of them are. And when my thoughts now are influenced and line up and recalibrated to where now I have the mind of Christ, now with confidence I can talk to a brother. I can reach out to a sister. Now God can use me to be salt and light in the world. Now Dare I say, I can pick up that keyboard and write a post that will actually bear witness to the love and hope of Christ. Everybody might not like it. Some people might, but we know it's the Spirit of God. There's so much more to say because... I want to give you just some scriptures to read. I'm not going to read them to you. I want you to take these home and read them. Because God willing, I'm going to talk about these next week. God not willing, you're going to read them this week regardless. Okay? (laughs) Micah 6.8. Ooh, that's a good one. Isaiah 1, 16 and 17. James... 1, 19 through 27. Talking about being doers of the word, not just listeners, or should I just say, not just speakers of the word. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And 1 Corinthians 13, 6 through 13. Can we allow these to frame our thinking this week? Can we allow these scriptures to challenge us on our thoughts and our ways and help refine us and let the Spirit now come and show us, have I actually been laying brick and mortar towards a tower of man that's trying to become something that is not of God? And if we could dare then be bold enough to say, not no more. God, you're mine. Or can we dare to use these scriptures this week and say, have I become like a Pharisee? Or have I become like Barabbas in a way that I'm trying to fight and scream and push God's agenda with no sensitivity, with no understanding, with no solution, with no hope, with no anointing that it's actually making people repel instead of come to the city, instead of coming to the light. Those are some real things to... To wrestle on. And this, I hope, isn't something we just wrestle today because of what's happening. This is what needs to drive us and continue to mold us and mature us all the days of our life, no matter what's at store, so that this church can be one. One in who? One in Jesus. One in his word. One by his spirit under God. And we could be, may I dare say and ask and pray, the true city on the hill that God can trust to bring all men from all walks of life into here and meet him. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 I hope you heard my heart this morning. Let's pray. Stand on up with me. I got really carried away for a second there. All right. Lord God, we thank you so much. We thank you that in the middle of our passionate displays and 
our worship and dissecting your Bible, Lord God, we pray that your truth and grace is what stands and nothing else. The truth and grace that should guide all of us by your spirit and by your word and by your son and to the world we live in, to the people in our lives, to the family and friends, to our classmates and future classmates, to our co-workers. Lord God, let us stay humble in your word and humble in your presence to know that your thoughts are greater than ours and your ways are greater than ours. So we come to you to continue to refine us right now to be the true image bearers you've called us to be. We thank you so much. In Jesus' precious name. Everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed our presentation. Would you consider partnering with us to share the hope of God and the love of Jesus by giving? You can give your gift at klcc.us forward slash give. Thank you for your generosity. Also, we would love to connect with you. So please follow, like, and subscribe to all of our social media platforms, as well as downloading our app on both the Apple and Google Play stores. Be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss a thing. Thanks for watching and see you next time.